Hi, everybody. My name is Annika Slattery, and this is the Humboldt Rural Tourism Summit. Um, I would like to thank everybody for coming, my amazing speakers, for um, giving their time to do these awesome presentations. Um, one sec. Let me pull up my schedule. Um, okay, so this meeting will run till around 1.30ish. Um, if you need to take time to go take a to get up and stretch, take a break, um, or anything you need to do, feel free. Um, we also are going to have a couple speakers, so it would be great if everyone could keep their uh, mics muted for um, the meantime. Uh, there will be time for interactive discussions and uh, question and answer sessions. Does that sound good to everybody? Awesome. Awesome. And can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, thumbs up and nod. Awesome. Okay. Well, before we begin, I would like to take the time to acknowledge that um, here in Humboldt County, we are not, uh, that we are um, unwelcome guests in um, the land who have been tended to, uh, who this, this land has been tended to by the, the Weot people who have lived here since time immemorable. Um, if you would like to learn a little bit more about some things that you can do for the Weot people, um, there's something called the Honor Tax and it's uh, made by the uh, seventh generation Indian Fund of Humboldt County. Um, I will put that link in the, uh, the chat, but for now, um, I would just like to acknowledge that before that we begin. Um, and now we can continue on. Um, and our first speaker is um, the amazing Tammy Reist from the Alabama Mountain and Lakes Tourism Association. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And Tammy, you can take it away. All right, let's see here. Can you see this? Yes. Blow it up. And let me start. All right, can you see it? <laughs> Right. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, I'm going to talk to you today on natural and cultural tourism. And I think it's interesting, you know, Alabama is a long way from California, but I have to share with y'all a short story. Um, I travel a lot internationally and I go to um, Toronto, Canada every year. And for some reason, I book Toronto, California. <laughs> And I wound up, or Ontario, California, and I wound up going, what? It's 72 degrees there in January? This could not be. So I have to share that with you about my, my fun trip to California. So anyhow, so I think what's important is you understand why um, natural and cultural tourism. And I put this presentation together before COVID ever hit. So now if you can imagine the way uh, our numbers are climbing as far as people getting out. But just to give you kind of a definition of what we feel is the tourism ministry has changed from the traditional long awaited, long planned annual family summer vacation to a form of leisure family bonding that occurs around you know, visiting places that are not normal, their neighborhood. And so when we look at the different things, such as adventure tourism, culinary, religious, and I'm going to show you some examples of these that we've put together for our North Alabama area. But to note that natural and core cultural heritage tourism is one of the fastest growing specialty markets in the tourism industry today. So how does the segment stacked up and we use Mandela, Mandela research for this. And again, this was prior to COVID. So as we know, when we look at 64%, we had people attending historical reenactments, which we know this now is probably changing because of the way our world is changing when it comes to a lot of our um, diversity and a lot of our uh, historical markers are being removed and, and such like that. But this kind of gives you um, a sense of like historical places, um, attending an art and craft fair festival, visiting a national state park, and then of course the urban neighborhoods. So one of the things that we created for North Alabama when we learned this research was we created what's called the Hallelujah Trail of Sacred Places. And we took within our 16 counties 
to be a part of this, you would have to submit to us a property that was at least 100 years old, that's standing on the original sites, that still holds services today, and are accessible to the public. And so from this, we birthed the Hallelujah Trail. And this is what it looks like. So it's a driving tour that people can take. We market this in many different ways. Uh, one of the thing, one of the ways I just got back last weekend from a huge, it's called Women of Joy, where 10,000 women come together to hear different uh, speakers on um uh, religion and we bring these this brochure there and we pick up a lot of folks we also give them each a marker so this is the trail marker that's at each of these locations and as you can see it's a diverse arrangement of churches uh the number 19 it's out in the middle of a forest and it's still held in church today with the clay floors and just it's just an interesting we even have shared this with like Auburn University, who has a huge architectural firm, because it also enlightens them on the architecture. So not only just thinking about it as the hallelujah, as far as the cultural heritage, but then also thinking about it from the, the landscape. We also gave each of our communities, you know, when it's hard when you're looking at a county and you're trying to pick two. So we gave each of our counties a thousand dollar grant that they could take the rest of their um, places and create niches for those areas. So out of the Hallelujah birth, the Rock of Ages, uh, Amen Trail, so lots of things that came about creating this overall Hallelujah. The other thing that we've been working on is the natural beauty. Uh, and you'll see behind me, this is a place that is in uh, Red Bay, Alabama. Some of you may have heard of Tiffin Motors. If you do RV travel, uh, they are actually made in Red Bay, Alabama, very small community. But this is one of the birding trails that my picture is behind. So speaking of trails, one of the things that I encourage communities to do is to look at your assets and see what you have. In our area, these were the focal points that we found that were very important to our community. So what we did was we've created a barbecue trail, something the South is really known for. The wine trail, yes, the wine trail is amazing. And when people come to our wine wineries, and then they'll say, hey, where's a good place to eat? So my wineries are telling them, get on the barbecue trail. The craft beer trail, a huge movement. In Huntsville, Alabama, which you may have heard of NASA, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, they took an old school and um, it needed to be closed down. They needed to build a bigger school. So they turned Campus 805 and they remade a school into a huge brewery. There's axe throwing, there's a speakeasy. So thinking about outside the box things that you can do. So a lot of our craft beer uh, breweries, they're actually ex either uh, rocket scientists that love this as a hobby. So it's nice to go back to your school and drink you some of their craft beer. Uh, of course, the Hallelujah, the Civil War Trail, the Alabama Bass Trail. Uh, we run an entire fishing uh, component through the state. And it's, I encourage you, if y'all uh, have bass fishing in your area or you're looking at maybe considering doing something like that, it's the Alabama Bass Trail, the Birding Trail, the train trail, and then our motorcycle trail. Some of the most beautiful, and I could see this happening in the, the Redwood area. I mean, just some beautiful trails. So I'll take you and let you um, understand some things that we, we engage with folks as we begin our trails. You know, one of the things that we learned was one factor, especially looking at a biking trail and looking at an activity that occurs on a human scale at the speed at which the cyclists go, they take in their surroundings. So what we have done is create like rails to trails to where there's a restaurant or a place that they could go to, you know, pump their tire. Um, I don't know if y'all have heard of Bell Chef. Bell Chef is a wonderful cheese 
that is made in Alabama. And she has a shop there. And so they've set it up with where you can put your bike stands, come in, have you some um, goat cheese ice cream, or just, you know, have something to drink while you're there. So again, looking at and discovering all those opportunities when you're looking at trails, what could enhance the trail? Trails are popular. Um, creating trails usually are at a low cost, free admission. Um, they grow awareness of the, the nature and the historical heritage to Alabama. They're also health conscious. And I think that this is very important that when you're looking at applying for grants that you always add that part of health conscious when you're getting people out. This piece here is just a walking trail that is done throughout our state to where you go into looking at old homes, different antebellum uh, surroundings. And then you've got a tour guide that is sharing, you know, what took place so many years ago. Another great uh, uh, place that we look for information is through this outdoor foundation. And I thought it was interesting that nearly half, 49.4% of Americans take advantage of the nation's outdoor opportunity. And the study is based on an online survey that they received over 40,000 Americans from ages six and older, and it covered 114 different activities, including trails. And so as we looked at some of the significance, I like the one, it's a case study in North Carolina with the Northern Outer Banks. And when they surveyed the cyclists, I thought it was interesting that they earn more than $100,000 annually. 87% uh, earn $50,000 or more and 40% have a master's or doctorate doctoral degree and 33 or 38% reported completion of a college degree. And why is this important? Well, it's important because they have the means. So when they're buying these bikes and when they're looking for these opportunities, opportunities can mean they're going to spend in your community as long as you keep uh, abreast of where the trail is headed and making sure. We've seen some that have put in like pop-up uh, stores, uh, just small stores within the community that people can can get either something to drink, something to eat, or just having a place for them to go um, use the restroom. This is one that I love to talk about. We didn't even have to build a single waterfall, but we were named the 2019 Governor's Conference Tourism Award winner for the Best Thing Campaign. Uh, my daughter is an occupational therapist, and uh, she did her internship in Greenville, South Carolina. And a counterpart of mine runs what's called Upcountry, which is around an eight-county regional tourism organization. And I asked him, I said, you know, what is like your number one piece of collateral that you give out to your visitors? And he said, oh, it's our waterfall trail. So I went back, took his trail, and identified some of our trails that were easy access, that could be um, brought on by the public to use. And so we created 13 magical selfie locations um, made by nature is what we call it. And so what this has done for us, we've um, been able to get this out to our communities, um, it has been with COVID, I have to share the story. We pushed it out so much and we created um, an ambassador club. And this is something I encourage you to look at and I'll share with you in a moment how you can do this um, because your ambassadors can be the best thing going for you to get your story out. And they actually just work for swag. Um, so anyhow, we also created these other trails, like I mentioned, the barbecue, the motorcycle, the train, the birding, and um, we've added a couple more. We, we are in the middle of doing a North Alabama mural trail. We identified 162 murals uh, that we'll be showcasing. We had the University of Georgia students actually take the project on and kind of give us a whole marketing piece. And so it turned out beautifully. 
Um, but to give you a little case study on our wine trail, our wine trail, we have six locations. Um, and this is the passport. And what we did is we created for each of the wineries a stamp that um, so no one could just mark off. So they all have a stamp. And so when the people visit, we've given them like pull up displays so that they can see if they go into this one wine trail that there is a whole trail being completed. And I think it's interesting because the data comes back to us. So we measure how many we get. We're averaging now about 150 a month that they've completed the trail. And here was a response, and I, this is old data, we get them all the time, but um, I love the one in the middle. It says, I'd like to tell you that we combined your wine and waterfalls. So they've heard of both of our trails and we had four days together. So what does that mean for tourism? That means they spent the night. Um, all, although I think they tried to kill the 64 year old on some of the trails, we had a blast and we passed it on to our friends. You certainly have a gym with this tour. Thanks again. So it's kind of like we started out with a paper trail and now we've added an online version. It's an app, but it's an online app and it's on our northalabama.org website. If you go under trails, wine's the first one to pop up and you can see that. The other thing we were able to do with our trails was in Alabama, let's say you from California wanted to come to our winery and you wanted to buy a wine and you wanted to ship it. Well, our laws read you couldn't ship the wine. And so this made it difficult. They were losing sales. They could do a wine event and have tasting, but yet if somebody liked it, you could not buy it there at the tasting. You had to go back to the site. So what we did was ask six questions to our wineries. And one was, how, many, how much wine do you produce? So they all collectively gave us their data. And then I turned it into a piece. I also wanted to know where their roots were from. Why did you choose Alabama to come and, and create your wine? And so you can see here that our six wineries, uh, one is from hung uh, Hungary, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and Switzerland. And we've kind of given you a timeline of when they opened and, and what awards they've won. And um, some of the... Um, ways in which they are pairing their wines. And why is this important? Well, I'll tell you why. So this next slide is the piece that we show that over 50,000 gallons of wine is produced each year. Together they have 210 acres. And what we did was we brought in the senator about, that represented that area, shared with him the story our organization was able to pull together a motor coach that brought representatives from Alabama to come tour the six wineries. And while we were on the bus, we shared with them the obstacles they were facing. And so what happened, that Senator passed the legislation, he actually passed three pieces of legislation and they all passed. So one, if you come to see us, we can sell you the wine and we can ship it to you. Two, if we do a taste testing, we can do sell you the wine there. And the other one dealt with giving incentives to our wineries. So when you look at tourism, it's not just about creating the niche. It's layering it in many components. And to bring the advocacy component in is huge. So never forget what, what you're doing. Now, I want to talk about the ambassadors. In my organization, we have six employees, two of which they work and they give brochure distribution. So all my members, my 500 plus members, they are delivering brochures and putting in different um, racks um, so that guests in a hotel or a restaurant or whatever can find all the great things that are going on in our area. We have one social media person and it's difficult to reach your hand around one county versus 16. And so we've created a North Alabama ambassador program. And if you wanna see what that looks like, you can go to northalabama.org, go under the plan section, 
and find the ambassadors. These are the 22 ambassadors. And what they do is they literally are already out in these communities and they're sharing through Instagram, through Facebook, through doing blogs for us, the beauty of North Alabama. It has raised our playing field tremendously. We've had the ambassador in, in for three years. There is a way in which I measure, because I love to measure things. Here's some more of the ambassadors. And I want you to look at Zenovia Stevens. She is the only African-American that we have. It, one thing we've learned is for diversity, there is not a lot of African-Americans that are doing this. So when Zenovia was chosen to be a part of this, Kelly Rippa was doing a story during the pandemic on trails and she was wanting to use diversity. And she Googled and found Zenobia and Zenobia went on the Kelly Ripa show and shared our story about North Alabama. So when you're looking at ambassadors, make sure you're creating people that can be of all ethnic um, places, all people so that your story can be told. So the way in which we measure, there's a report called CLEAR, K-L-E-A-R. Meltwater is a PR firm that we use that uh, when we're sending out press releases, we can zoom in and it identifies people that may be dealing with cultural and heritage, that may be dealing with uh, music. Um, but we're able to put all of our ambassadors in this and through their posts. So this was July 1st through July 31st. This shared with us 128 posts were made by these people that are working for us for free. We had 35.8% engagement. The reach was 137 and the estimate measured value was 110,000. So again, an easy way and when I say we pay them swag, we give them logo t-shirts. We give them, I just, for tourism, it's National Tourism Week, I just send them each a $25 gift card with a letter saying thank you. And it's these little things that they do. I mean, they'll wear the shirt in front of the waterfall as they're hashtagging us. They'll put the coffee cup there. They're making blogs for us. So it's just a wonderful thing that I encourage you all to do. I'm not going to, this here, I'm just going to say, look at your partners. We are a part of the Tennessee Valley region, so TVA, which supplies our power. And you might want to look at that for your own place. A lot of times they want to give back to communities. And so they actually bought a National Geographic site that my company, we run, and we do the um, um, social media for that National Geographic site. So it's called um, the Tennessee River Valley Geotourism. You can look at it. And I want to share with you a case study. This is something that I started and I had a, I, I love this. Um, in, in your communities, a lot of times you'll see things that need to be improved. And when you came into Decatur, Alabama, when I used to be the tourism director for that one particular city and county, we had the, the beautiful Tennessee River and we had an eyesore, and this was the eyesore. It's the Ingalls Shipyard Company. It was built back in 1942, and then it packed up and moved because someone, what I call, dangled a carrot over Mississippi and said, come, to, come see us. So they left us with an eyesore in our gateway. And for years, it sat here. And uh, we finally decided, you know, one of our assets is the river. We need to do something. Well, what could that be? So what we did is we started working with a local architect and we said, can you do this for free? We want to do a pitch to our city and to our county. We don't know if it's going to play out, but if you can help us design this. Well, I'm not a fisherman. So what I did was went to Bassmasters. Bassmasters is one of your leading in the industry. They fish all over the U.S. and they even do international fishing. And I asked Tripp Wilden if you could build the dynasty of what you would consider one of the best places to, you know, he said, I'd do a 10 boat ramp. That way 10 people can get in at one time. Lots of parking, lots of lighting. And so this is what we came up with. So how did I pitch it to the city? 
Well, with Indicator, there at the time were only 10 hotels. And this is your good, your bad, and your ugly, okay? You had some Marriott's, and then you had some that were like written by the day. But we asked them if they could self-impose a dollar fee. Well, they asked for $2. I mean, you know, go figure. You know, you ask, you're trying to give them something, and they're, they want more. But that's fine. We said, okay, we can do that. And what we would like for you to do, we know you're going to the bond market to borrow money, borrow the money that we need to fill this and we will repay it. And we had kind of figured out what those 10 hotels based on the 75% occupancy they were running at the time, based on the rate, it would bring in around 395,000 a year. So if they borrowed the 3.2 million that I needed to initially get started, I could well pay it over. And so in that plan, we asked that they put it in a separate fund, not a general fund, but in a tourism product development fund to be used for tourism product development. And that's what they did. I will tell you today that that fund is bringing in $795,000 because it's added new product in our market. So this is what it looks like. This here happens to be our Alabama Bass Trail Fishing Tournament that we run through my office that brings in 250 boats, 500 anglers. We only fish in the state. We do 10 tournaments a year, but the people are coming from 12 different states. And I have to tell you, we do have someone from California that fishes with us. So it's an amazing thing, but this is exactly the plan. And we did bid when we, that architect did win the bid to do this. So I just wanted to show you that. We saw that it was such a success that three years later, as we're measuring the success of not only the events that were taking place in the green space, we needed a, a kind of a pavilion. So we built a 37,000 square foot open air pavilion, kind of looks like a, a, a mini Bassmasters, and it's right next to it. We do around 300 events a year in this. It is just a blank split place. It's just a concrete floor. Um, the actual uh, windows raise up. Um, you can set around 2,500 people in there. Um, so it, it just, it's done a great thing. But I love sharing that. We also use some of the funding to do signage signage that we needed to identify around our town. And what I love to say is success breeds success. Because as we were planning this, and something I may not have mentioned to you, that eyesore was next to a water treatment plant. So it smelled. So who's going to go there? Okay. So we build this, and then we get a $8 million home to suites. So again, by our hospitality industry in what we consider a rural area that took the initiative to see our assets and to build upon them and go ask our political being to do this for us. In the end, I went through three administrations from the beginning to the end to complete this project. But in the end, we completed it. And we have a wall on the wall where we've listed all the groups, all the mayors. The one thing that I tell people when I do this story is let tourism, let that tourism bureau be the one that leads the charge because your municipal people are going to change. They're going to change every four years. So always have it, whether it be the city manager, I, I prefer the tourism folks because typically they stay around. Um, but again, that, that is just a little presentation that I share on the natural cultural tourism and that it is an important part of economic development. Thank you so much. That was amazing. We can now open up the floor for any um, question and answer sessions that you guys want to uh, take part of. And then I did see a question in the chat. Let me hold on. Let me see if I can bring that up. Do, 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 do. Where was it? Oh, <laughs> question um, from Annalise. How do you uh, create your app? We use a company that's called Banwango. And 
They are absolutely amazing. They don't even want you to call it an app. It's a web-based. Mm-hmm. We are able to set uh, coordinates, like for our wineries. There's a coordinate you can set up. So when you check into a place, it knows that you're in the area. You can check mark. And at the end, it can send you an email that says, X person has completed this. I I encourage you to look at how you can sign up for it. When you go to uh, our wineries, we've got one set up for it. Our waterfall trail, we've got one set up for it. So when you buy into Bamwango, you use multiple platforms uh, like our mural trail. Our state of Alabama is actually bought into it and they are using it for the international market to be able to go in and put, um, let's say, um, events like if there's a theater and they're selling tickets, they have a way that it can be done on that site as well. It's inventory based. We have Huntsville that uses it if you've got a group coming in and they'll set up like five restaurants that you could dine at and different uh, places you could shop. So when you download the app, it could be called the NASA Girls Getaway app. And, And so it's used multiple times. You get great analytics. Um, and it's a great way to share. So it's an online web based and it has been amazing. Annalise also also asked, um, how do you spell that? <laughs> it's B-A-N-W-A-N-G-O. Yep. Great. Awesome. Does anyone else have any other questions? Floor is yours. Take it. We have we have plenty of time. Oh, is this for me? <laughs> oh, for for anybody for anybody who wants to ask you any more um, any more questions, I would actually like to add too that um, I was really interesting about um, the trails that you've done. Arcade is actually in the midst of making its own um, Arcade Wayfinding project, and we're doing charting all these different trails around the area, um, and they're going to have these awesome interpretive signage, and you can scan a code and get all this great information. It's really interesting how the um, two things kind of sync up and everything. Super cool. The one thing I was going to say, and I didn't finish my story, was with our waterfall trails during COVID, we really pushed out socially to come visit our waterfalls. And what happened was when people got out of their homes, a lot of times they didn't realize um, how to take care of the environment the way the normal users do. And so one of our ambassadors said, you need to stop promoting these waterfall trails. I'm like, why? And he said, because, you know, the litter and just, you know, how that can lead into, you know, if, let's just say somebody's a diabetic and they did an injection and, and, you know, it went out into the, you know, a raccoon took it and got it in the waterways, you know. So we wound up partnering with Leave No Trace. And so Leave No Trace, uh, uh, of course, when I called them, I said, now look, it's COVID. We've lost a lot of business due to, you know, our tourism industry. People are not staying in hotels. And and um, I think they quoted me like $20,000. I'm like, okay, that is too much. But we went back to our power plant, to our electric company, and they gave us a $5,000 grant. So we were able to put that. So if you go on to our website, northalabama.org, we have a We Cares page. And under the We Cares, we have in there um, under advocacy, the Leave No Trace and the principles and the website that is there. And so I encourage you, if you are doing things, to always remember that what you create, you need to have kind of a, a give back to go along. I think it just means a lot when you when you do that. I, Tammy, this is Julie. I'd love to ask you a question that I know has come up with a few people. Um, Humboldt is quite a big county, but we're only one county. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you, do you have a committee of all your county representatives? Mm-hmm. Um, is everybody on the same page? Because we definitely have a lot of things going on in Humboldt that are quite disparate and not always clearly communicated. 
I have a uh, 60 member board, but I have a nine member executive committee. And the way we are broke out is um, we meet quarterly as a, as a region and we rotate our meetings around. So I would say to you, if, if you're humbled and you've got a lot of towns, if you haven't got a board where maybe one person for each of the towns is a part of, um, and then to ask them the questions, what is it you have for your community? What is it you want to see? And then you start identifying what I call those segments. And then you create a um, plan of work around it. And I can share with, um, is it uh, Annika? Annika. Annika, yes. Annika. I can share with her our program of work. So we do have some um uh, workshops that we do where we'll bring in folks and I'll ask them at the end of the year, I always share with them a survey. I used to work for Marriott and um, uh, I used to build hotels for a group of doctors. That's where I got my start in the tours ministry and Marriott was really big on interviewing its employees to make sure number one, that they were getting the needs they needed but also that their managers knew them. So I took that into my role. So at the end of the year, I always send out to my partners a survey. And whether we had a great year or a bad year, I share it with them. And then I say to them, we're working on our budget for next year. Tell me what things you would like to see done. That way, those people you have that are those naysayers, you've given them that opportunity. And then you can look into it. And I've learned that's how it works very well with us. And then we create that. And then at those meetings that I have, I continue to go over, you know, hey, this came out of the discussion that we had at year end and where we asked for y'all's, you know, opinions on things. But I really have no issues. We, we try to help them out in so many ways they know that they can come to me if they have a, a project or if they need help. And that's one of the things we work very closely with the Alabama legislature. I am not paid by the state. We are independently the way we were formed 58 years ago. We are, uh, and I can share with you how we are funded because it might help you. Um, we get a lodging tax in my 16 counties, which is a 1% added on. So out of the 67 counties in Alabama, my 16 collect a 5% state tax. Everybody else collects four. That 1% half comes to my organization and the other half goes to the counties. So that could be a creative way. And I could share that information with you that you might want to pitch to your um, counties. Each of your towns could get a, you know, a portion of that. So if you get half and then each of them get half of what's made up, um, it works really relatively well. I'll give you an example. Huntsville, which is my largest county in Madison, their half is $868,000 a year. And I get the other half. And I'm basically just using this to help market the whole region. And I found the best way for me to market is through trails. It keeps people here longer. It keeps people cross, what I call cross pollinating across areas. It takes rural communities that don't have a lodging that cannot bring in those assets such as lodging. But if I can help create a trail that's going to be four days, people stay, then guess what? That helps my overall impact. Yes, Becky. Yes. Um, hi, Becky Reese, Cruise Planners. Um, I find that one of the hardest things is convincing the powers to be of the importance of signage to let people know where to go and where to get to the activities. How important was that um, to, this, to the success of your sites? Okay, this is what I did. I had went to Dahlonega, Georgia, where they have a wonderful marketing college, and I actually teach the second year students. And I'm going to Dahlonega going, look at their signage. We need this. 
So I came back just like I did with the architect and I went to a sign company (laughs) and I said, I need us to have a work session and we need to identify where we need signage. So we brought in kind of a, a board that had lodging partners, it had industry partners, it had, you know, not just, you never want the same people in the room, you need diversity. And so we started uh, mapping out, and I used Alonigo's example, because I love the way theirs looked. And so we put together where these should go, what it would look like. And then I planted the senator from Alabama, he's a local senator, and brought him to my tourism board at the time we were getting surveys back. And our surveys continues like, you need signage. I didn't know where we were going. And so he said at that meeting, is there something I can do for y'all? You know, I've got some money here. I said, yes, hang on just a minute. And I pulled out the signage plan and it also had a price tag to it. And so that's how we got it. So I always tell people, be ready. And there's people out there right now that will do that. I would say, go ahead. If signage is what you need and you need it for your whole community, start bringing those people in. Identify what are the places we need to identify. What will it look like? Bring in the sign company or a company that does design work. Let them give you the price tag. And then you've got it ready to roll. If you're not ready to roll and somebody asks the question, how can I help you? Then you got to wait and get it done. Um, and secondly, um, my husband would never forgive me if I didn't say, hey, his family's from down in Mobile. All right. Hey, and we are the home to Mardi Gras. It is not New Orleans. <laughs> I know. That was my husband was talking about just a little bit ago. And yeah. love your big shrimp. And I've learned how to properly fry them. <laughs> Oh, good, good. Yeah, Mobile. It's, it's, you know, it's funny. It's not my area, but David Clark, the manager there, runs Mobile, one of my dear friends. So, you know, when people say, Tammy, you're North Alabama, but at the end of the day, we're tourism and we work together because we have to stick together in order to make things work. So. I think we have time for one more. Okay. That's Greg Foster. Yes. All right, good. Yes, got into. The, hi, I'm uh, I'm Greg Foster. I'm the executive director of the Redwood Region Economic Development Commission. But more importantly, in my opinion, I uh, coordinate a group called Fly Humble. So we're do air service development, yeah. um, and we have uh, attracted two new airlines and three new destinations. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so I'm wondering if, if you work closely with. You mentioned Huntsville, um, and I know your uh, airport director there, Rick. Yes, Rick Tucker. He's a great Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, I think I'll see him in Florida in June. Um, But I'm just wondering how closely you work or have you uh, worked with the airports in terms of terminal advertising, working with the airlines, get people in, that sort of thing. Yeah, we work very close with them. Um, We, one of the things that when they're wanting a new airline to come in, they need data. And that's where we come in to help them. Um, Sometimes, again, like I said, you can get so embraced in your own what you do that you don't see what the outside does. A perfect example was we were wanting direct flights from um, Huntsville to New York. And this was several years ago. And Barbie, who works for Rick, was like, Tammy, can you help me? And I said, well, yes, Doc in America which is based out of New York. I had just had one of the Japanese guys say, look, if you can get us a direct flight from here to New York, it'll sure help us getting back to, you know, um, Osaka where their headquarters was. And so just, she didn't realize that. Um, The other thing we've done is been able to help promote, like they can give like a free ticket. Well, I can take it and I can promote it on like, Rick and Bubba, which is a syndicated show to where we're kind of talking about, you know, hey, check out this and check out Allegiant Air that's coming. Um, So we really help in that regard. He's a member of ours. We have a membership. It's $150 a year. Uh, We're also working right now on a project that you'll find very interesting. As people are waiting to... um, go travel, get on an airline. We have a group, it's called the Singing River Trail. It's right now in the incubator stage, but it's six of our counties 
And Rick has a portion at the airport and it's non-use. He cannot use this land. So he's given it to the Singing River Trail, which will help do some connectivity for our visitors that are, you know, maybe waiting till their flight comes in. If it's delayed, it gives them an opportunity to get out and do some walking. So again, that's just a few ways in which we've helped with the airlines. And as you know, Huntsville, we are one of the high, we were worried at one time that, you know, we might lose our airport yeah. because of the way the studies come in. And we were one of the highest. Um, but again, we are, um, it's, it's a beautiful, I mean, a, a beautiful airport. So anyhow. we'll have to come visit. My son was there down there a couple of years ago for the NASA rack rocket competition with his university. Yes. He loved yeah. that area. He thought it was fun, but Good. Anyway, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tammy, for your invaluable presentation. We're now going to be moving on into, we're going to do a little breakout room activity. So let me just share my screen and we'll get that going. Oh, right. Tammy, do you need to take off? Yes, I got to I gotta do another Zoom call with Economic Development Director. So thank you all so much. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Stay safe and happy travels. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow. That was great. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to move on and do a little breakout room activity first. And um, let me just share my screen real fast. Do, 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 do. Present. There we go. Okay, guys, um, we're going to do a little breakout room activity. Um, I hope that all of you are familiar with uh, a SWOT analysis. So that is strengths, or the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and um, my gosh, I'm blanking on the last one. Um, uh, threats. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we're going to be focusing on the um, the strengths and opportunities of Humboldt tourism. So um, I believe that there should be a link in the chat and there to two interactive um, uh, word clouds. So they're going to ask you what are um, some opportunities of Humboldt tourism and what are some strengths of um, uh, Humboldt tourism. Just feel free to fill in your, your thoughts and ideas and um, that's going to take about five minutes and then we can all come back together and then we're going to um, just kind of look at everything and see what we all came up with. Hey, successful. Awesome. We got everyone back. Okay, cool. Yay. Oh, great. Thank you so much for everyone for participating in that. I would love to take a look at what everybody came up with. Let me share my screen. All right. Our summer strengths, natural beauty, beaches, redwoods, dog friendly hiking, economic development, definitely affordable activities. I often think that, um, there, when people say, oh, like, there's nothing to do up in Humboldt, there's, not, there's so much to do. You just have to look really hard sometimes. You just have to look around. There's so, and I feel like there's so many new uh, places popping up, and I, I, I feel so lucky that I've gotten the chance to um, experience this place and call this place home for the past four years. Ooh. All right, let's look at the, ooh, the opportunities. Murals, oh, yeah. Public transportation, that's a really great feature, especially for students where the public transport is free. It's pretty awesome. Um, I know I saw the, I saw the um, learning from indigenous peoples, definitely. Um, I'd love to have that more incorporated into the mainstream tourism aspects of Humboldt County. Um, I also saw something about um, the upcoming, the, the sky bridge or the sky, the skywalk, the canopy walk in, uh, in the, the Sequoia Zoo. I'm so excited for that to start. It looks amazing. Oh my gosh. I wouldn't, I feel like we've been waiting on this for like so long. I remember seeing going to a whole, I remember going to um, the park when I was in um, like my sophomore year and they were like, oh yeah, we're building this. And I was like, oh yes, it's going to be so cool. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone who um, participated into that activity. Um, we're next going to, so we were originally going to have um, Nikki Brown, who is the director of economic development for, um, uh, for I'm sorry, for uh, Siskiyou Economic Development. Um, she was unable to make it today. So we're going to bump up um, uh, Julie Benmau, who is um, the director of Visit, uh, Visit the Redwoods. So Julie, whenever you are ready to um, take off, go right ahead. Hello. 
Whoa. What you I just, I'm just getting myself organized, which may take quite a lot of time. Okay, <laughs> thank you everybody for, um, for coming today. And uh, thank you to Tammy, although she's not here for a great presentation. And uh, Annika for putting this together. Um, it's uh, so tourism, yes, is recognized as an important economic driver for many communities. And this is both rural and metropolitan. And the Bureau has been around for more than 40 years working to promote Humboldt County. And before COVID, the Bureau was reviewing its past marketing strategies and objectives. But this past year has really forced us to identify who is traveling and why, and to reimagine our marketing strategy. And as you can see um, from this short list of things that we have, um, this is mar marketing and now is much more than getting heads in beds, which is the main focus of for the Humboldt Lodging Alliances, which is great. But the Bureau's role is to promote all the assets and activities that visitors are looking to enjoy and ensure that all the regions throughout Humboldt thrive in today's increasingly competitive tourism landscape. So the Bureau's responsibility is to give the smaller stakeholder communities leverage against the competing counties by representing them in the national and international tourism market. And one of the things is that, you know, we say we're the home of the tallest trees and everything, but actually if you are driving up or down um, 101, and you go through Del Norte and Mendocino, we all have quite lovely uh, coastline and beaches and trees. I prefer ours, um, but so the Bureau is now focusing on, um, as Tammy said, what do we do to get our people staying longer? What do the visitors want to do? And what do the visitors not know that they want to do yet? Um, so, and tourism cannot solve the civic infrastructure challenges that affect Humboldt, but it can be a strong partner in moving the county through pandemic recovery and into a sustainable future by doing what we do best, which is working with industry partners to tell world travelers about the wonders of, uh, of Humboldt. So the Bureau's mission is to reach beyond the county line to attract and connect with potential visitors from across the nation and the world. And to do this, we work with national and international media to ensure that Humboldt assets are promoted on all the traditional print media and electronic media platforms. But much more so recently, we've been working with influencers um, to get in front of the Gen Xs and Zers and um, having quite a bit of um, luck with that. So this is a, a very different uh, presentation than Tammy's. In 2019, travel-related spending in Humboldt was just under half a billion dollars. Um, by the way, these numbers are from uh, the Dean Runyon and Associates report that they do for Visit California every year. So revenues increased every year for the last 10 years from the 2010 377 million in revenue to 219 484 million, which netted the county. $42 million in tax revenue. And in January of 2020, we were predicting a 10% increase based on the growth of the past 10 years. Um, and then the pandemic hit. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to... Um, the initial numbers for direct tourism spending in 2020 as of today 
is 285 million, which is a decrease of 34.4%, which is significantly lower even than 2010's revenue. Um, in January 2020 through March the 16th, our, vis our visitor tourism numbers were average, but then from mid-March through April and May, travel was non-existent and the county was closed to visitors and hotels and accommodations were only allowed to open and with many restrictions on June the 19th. Boy, does that seem like a long time ago. However, Historically, actually, accommodations don't generate the most travel income. It's the food service industry that brings in the most revenue. And in 2020, this sector was decimated and suffered over a 47% decrease. And as we know, even as of today, it hasn't really been able to return to full service. So initially, um, attending all these travel webinars and things at the beginning of the pandemic. A lot of international tourism and financial organizations were making predictions on when we would return to normal, but no one knew of the extent of the pandemic or its long-term economic, social and psychological impacts on us all. And I guess we will still wait to see those outcomes. Um, of all the pandemic phrases, and I love this, that have been part of our daily lexicon, you know, including pivot and resilience, consumer travel sentiment became an important data point for us. And here in Humboldt, all Funnily enough, it was the resident sentiment that was actually more important than the consumer traveler. As a rural county with a modest healthcare system, you know, the residents were really outspoken about visitors coming and perhaps bringing and spreading COVID and the impact it would have on our healthcare system. So the Bureau put all our destination marketing endeavors on hold and put the focus on um, visitors to stay home and stay safe. Um, and for the residents, the messaging was around mask wearing, social distancing, hand washing, and staying home. And as you can see from this slide, Rodney the banana slug was all over it, literally. Um, however, this pause allowed us to develop weekly Facebook posts featuring many different aspects of hum life in Humboldt. Um, this, these have included a postcard from Humboldt, Humboldt couch adventures, which are videos, Humboldt's moment of Zen and the Humboldt bucket list. And on all our posts, we used at least two hashtags, one being heavenly Humboldt and the other being the keep Humboldt healthy. Um, the results of these efforts was we had a 334% increase in traffic to our Instagram and Facebook. And we have um, about 58, 57, 58,000 followers, which was a great um, improvement over the years before. And talking about traffic, as we all know, for the past months and into the future, um, the primary visitor is driving. They're driving an average distance of between three and 500 miles and, and staying for three or four or more days. We also saw a significant increase in RVs and camping. And this is a trend which will continue this year. Um, with a significant investment by Visit California, who are our state um, tourism organization, they, they've just promoted a road trip campaign. And Humboldt is le leveraging the content with a lot of local stories that they promote on all their, their platforms. However, and um, 
This is a nod to Greg. With the increase in flights and added destinations coming in the very near future, Humboldt will be easily accessible from Phoenix, Burbank, Denver, adding to the daily San Francisco and Los Angeles flights, which as Greg has just said, may bring as many as 14,000 visitors over the next three or four months. And a getaway from the heat and the crowds and coming to Humboldt County could be a game changer. So in June, the Bureau will launch a Be Cool in Humboldt campaign. And we're going to be targeting it at Phoenix, Los Angeles, Reading, Sacramento and Chico. The Bureau's message, messaging will include letting people know that they are welcome and invited and also to travel safely. And I'm currently working with the, the regions in Humboldt to ensure that their marketing needs um, and um, campaigns um, and their content resonates with the tourists. Um, and develop some more lists of the trails and the highlights and our strength as a rural community. Um, moving on. So who is visiting Humboldt and why are they coming here? So unmarried millennials, uh, 26 to 35s and the unmarried Gen Xers who are 36, 49, are the core consumers and their main interest and they're pushing the travel tra trends include wellness, which includes, you know, outdoor adventure, health, hiking. They're interested in all the products that we farm here and produce here, the craft drinks, the organic food, Millennial parents who are very socially conscious are taking more trips than any other generation, an average of three a year. And right now they want to be with their kids out in nature. One of the other big markets that we've seen um, increasing are women travelers, whether solo or in groups, and they, um, are a big economic driver in this. And of course, we can't talk about marketing without acknowledging that the baby boomers still um, are a significant secondary target. Currently, the Bureau is sending out an estimated 800 copies of our map and guide each month. And we're responding daily to calls and email requests for information. And of course, we are always providing help for people who want the perfect Redwood wedding. Today, we're getting a much clearer view of the post-COVID tourism landscape. With many people already vaccinated, data shows a distinct rise in optimism resulting in increased travel planning and also booking for the next months. The primary groups are including parents traveling with children and our millennials. And another trend that we've seen have been young tech professionals moving out of cities to work remotely. Whether or not they'll actually make rural counties like Humboldt their permanent home is yet to be seen. However, as we all know, house values have increased in Humboldt and the real estate market is very, very active. So we can't do this on our own and collaboration is a main ingredient to successful marketing. Um, Humboldt is a member of the North Coast Tourism Council we're a destination marketing partnership between Del Norte, Humboldt, Mendo and Lake. And branded North of Ordinary, this group has increased traffic significantly on all our 
um, north of ordinary platforms over the past month and has been a really successful collaboration, allowing us in Humboldt to leverage our marketing investment. Um, Visit California are great partners. As mentioned previously, we're working with them and participating in their road trip campaigns. And one of the things this does is it puts Humboldt in front of thousands of people who know the brand Visit California and the things about California that uh, Visit California have done to establish like it being the golden state and everybody's beautiful and we're all fabulously healthy and having fun. Those are the branding points that we up here in Humboldt are riding on their strengths. Um, I'm continuing to host media visits and attend virtual travel and trade and media expos. And although attending trade and consumer events is a large part of our normal marketing strategy, I, I don't think this year we have any plans to attend in-person shows and the international shows are definitely not in our future as obviously international travel is going to take a little more, a little more time to uh, bounce back. In April, we had three amazing articles um, about Humboldt. Condé Nast Traveller, who I had worked with last year, um, put out a fabulous article called Ancient Redwoods, Empty Beaches and Foraged Fine Dining on California's North Coast. Um, the group OM, OM, who are professional photographers, did what is one of the most beautiful um, posts called Walking Among the Giants. And um, Backpackers, which is a huge organization, just released Beaches, Bears and Redwoods, the ultimate guide to California's Lost Coast Trail. So I serve on the Cal Travel Cannabis Marketing Committee and on the board of the California Adventure District. And before I end, I want to say a word about cannabis. There is a huge and fast growing interest in cannabis tourism. Everything from visiting farms to enjoying um, dinners, uh, paired dinners. Um, and Humboldt is, is very much a trailblazer, apart from having one of the most famous Humboldt brands, which is going to um, end up being marketed with appellations. Um, we have two venues opening soon in the county. As you probably know, Papa and Barclay are opening an innovative cannabis retail addition to their manufacturing plant in Eureka. And it will feature a curated dispensary, a tasting room, a luxury day spa, an outdoor food truck and a consumption lounge. And later on in the year, our friends who have just purchased the Scotia Hotel um, will be opening it as a wellness resort with consumption areas. So Humboldt is really stepping forwards with this and cannabis itself is poised to become a major tourism asset and um, revenue producer. So in, uh, in conclusion, Tourism is an integral part of the long-term solution to post-COVID economic reco recovery, but no longer is tourism a goal in itself and it can't be. The reality is tourism contributes to building better destinations and experience for locals and visitors alike. The new role for destination marketing and management aligns tourism, community and economic development. And it's a shift from promoting communities to building communities. And the quality of life for residents equals the quality of experience for visitors.
So thank you all for your time. I am happy to answer any questions and I'm always open to hearing everybody's comments and ideas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. That was awesome. I do see some questions in the chat. Um, um, Cyril had asked, uh, let's see. Cyril had asked um, any da data for driving from which states, um, CA um, or Oregon? I, I don't know if Cyril wants to elaborate a little bit more on that, but. Heck yeah, I'll just share with Julie. <laughs> I would love more data from um, understanding the, the tourism market. So are they, uh, the ones who are driving into our, our area, how many are from Oregon? How many are from different parts of California, Nevada? Is there a breakdown and where is that data kept? Thank you. That's a really good question, Cyril. And it's a bit like um, asking how long is a piece of string? A lot of our data is what is known as anecdotal, which means it's not data. Um, we do know from some of the parks, especially the Humboldt State Park and the Redwood Parks, when they have camping, they tend to take better details, but there's no one source for that information. We do know that especially June, July and August last year, there were a lot of RVs coming from a long way away, people from Florida um, and the East Coast, especially from at the beginning, areas that um, didn't have any restrictions. And they came to California and a lot of them were quite annoyed because we, we were tightening up, if you remember, on our restrictions. Um, so we're still seeing vehicles coming. We see a lot from Washington and Oregon and they're doing what we presume is the Pacific Coast Trail. We have quite a lot from Utah and as far away as Wisconsin. Um, but mainly um, it, it has been internal California. Um, and, you know, we think that that, especially with Visit California doing so much promotion, um, that will remain maybe for the drive market, but we are expecting a lot of families. Parents are going to stick their kids in the car and drive them on, on a big adventure. And the two things the parents want is somewhere for the kids to be able to connect with nature and then somewhere to take them to calm them down when they're bored with looking at 300 foot trees. And yes, um, with Greg's comment, the uh, Bureau is just about to enter into an agreement with a geo um, fencing um, company that will be able to track people's cell phone data, um, which we all have, unfortunately. So may I say something about that question Cyril had? When I was up in the uh, Redwood National Park, um, one of the fellows up there that has been working for a long time, he said they come, everybody comes in in a progression. So first you have, um, and depending when the schools are out, and so you have this movement that comes in from the East Coast, Midwest, and the West Coast to visit the Redwoods with their families. And it's almost, um, he said you can almost clockwork, put it in clockwork to see what it is and how they come. So I just, re he used to run the um, Aleutian Goose Festival. So I know him through Godwit days, but I just thought that was an interesting way that they could, they could just figure out how long, how many hours, how many days, weeks it would take them to get there. That might be something that someone would like to track. Thank you, Alex. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I saw another. Annika, can I just make one of the comment? Um, I know that the numbers, um, you know, we said that we're down 40%. I have to say that um, 
Humboldt and Mendocino are pretty much on a similar track and they are down equally as we are. But in the third quarter in San Francisco, sales tax was down 70%. So, and, and I, I, I don't know if Greg and some of the others on this call will agree with me, but being a rural county has had its benefits for us. And we didn't tank as badly as we thought we were going to. Mm -hmm. And although, as I said, you know, obviously our arts and mm -hmm. entertainment, which is huge, you think of all the festivals and the amazing events and that we put on, um, we haven't had any income from that, but neither have we been able to support the people who put those on. And I think it's really important that now we can move into having these, that, um, you, you know, we embrace them so that next year we're going to have all these fantastic things in person again. You know, yeah, and, and Julie's right. Um, we had some jurisdictions that actually came up in their sales tax over the previous year. And, you know, I was a doom and gloom person early on. And fortunately, most of the cities you know, plan for the worst and got much better. And I think we had two great marketing uh, 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 advantages uh, last year. Um, <laughs> one was this big map that the state puts out and the LA Times put it on of, of all the uh, purple and red counties, except for up in this little corner, there's this little yellow county. And, and uh, we were we were one or two steps even better than Mendocino in terms of COVID. So people were coming here because we were open. Uh, and then the other great graphic was the smoke map of California. And again, you have this entire, I mean, we had some bad days here, obviously, but um, but you had this entire state under this giant cloud of smoke. And then you can see this little half circle of green up on the North Coast. And so I suspect that drove a lot of people here. And as Julie mentioned, you know, we had RVs on the side of, on the side of, you know, highways and all that, uh, just parking coming here. So yeah, we had a pretty good summer. I was interested to hear Tammy talking about the development of trails and feel not smug, really, but that we are actually doing this already. And I think Humboldt County residents have a really great grasp of the, the wealth of things that go on here, all the way from our farmers markets, you know, to having a, a bike trail and um, things like this. So, you know, I'm very much focused on introducing all these things in a very tempered way to tourists because um, we don't want what happened at Yellowstone in August last year. They had to close the park because there were so many people there. And also there were so many people who were camping for the first time. Um, you know, who were lighting fires in the wrong places. And I mean, a lot of this comes with traveling respectfully. And it's not just respect for Mother Earth, but it's also respect for each other. Um, and that's, that's really a strong thing. And I think we're doing a relatively good job of it. All right. I had a couple more questions in the chat for you, Julie, if that's okay. Let's see. Where, where'd you go? Oh my gosh. I love how much um, is going on in the chat. I'm so glad you guys are getting so much out of this because I sure am. Um, okay. Well, she, um, okay. Cyril also asked, um, Julie, how is, is there anything that we can do to help the, the Redwoods? And then also another one, it was, um, Ashley asked, um, are, uh, are the Instagram and Facebook handles for the um, Bureau Visit Humble? No. And in fact, they were on my, you know what? I will put them in the chat. Thank you. And I will also put in the chat links to these three amazing articles. It's interesting seeing what people from outside pick up when they come here. Um, so I will do that um, right now, if I can work out how to do that and chew gum at the same time. Oh, 
I'm seeing something about the about Northern Lights. Is that a, is that a festival that happens up here that I was not aware of? Yes, I believe it takes. Um, it's in the southern part uh, near Richardson mm. Grove. You're clearly and, not a raver and an EDM fan. That's a big, uh, <laughs> All right. big one down um, there at Cooks Valley. Ooh. Uh, here's Leanne in Southern Humble, and I'm going to get up on my soapbox. Annika, with all due respect, the county does not stop at Fortuna. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I like, I have to, um, it, it's my job to get on my Southern Humboldt soapbox regularly to advocate for the amazing things that we have going on down here at this end of the county. And to answer your question directly, Northern Nights is a relatively new festival. I think it's been going on about five years now. As Greg says, it is kind of a <clears throat> raver dance club, um, musical scenes in the Redwoods, uh, right at the county line. It, the property actually straddles both Humble and Mendocino County. And if I'm to believe rumors, we should be looking for some festivals happening this summer down there too. So yeah, there's a lot down here in Soham. So please, I, I will remind you regularly that we're here. <laughs> please do, please do. Please continue to do that. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I had no idea about that. Um, I think that where was there was one other question. Do 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 do. Um, okay, uh, looks like I have a question from um, question. Julie's collaborate. What the ZWH offer? Yeah, uh -huh. that's me. Okay, there we go. Thank you so, so much, <laughs> Julie. You heard me just real briefly this morning. Um, yes. Hi, Maggie. I really want to reach out to you. It's you've been on my list. Uh, I really appreciate what you've described in your approach, and that it really is the the you know more progressive way is is it's not just promotion. It's also community building and economic development hand in hand with you, and in that mix are your environmental organizations because the the visitor sentiment of the 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 uh, target populations that are coming up here because of our natural beauty and wellness and everything. Those are our people. <laughs> and right. um, we, uh, you know, I have heard from f folks, not, not frequently, but there is a thing that uh, we can now make our websites so appealing and so inviting and so beautiful as HSU does that sometimes when new faculty or students arrive or visitors come to the county, they're a bit disappointed because they've been given this sense that we are this environmental uh, you know, nirvana, and um, that when, when they, they um, stay overnight, they don't find it as quite as pro uh, progressive as they were hoping it would be. Right. And um, in, in our dining uh, food serving uh, businesses. And so um, everything has been thrown up in a, a, a turmoil with all of that because of COVID, but now we can get back to getting really organized in our approach to really putting forward our best foot. And we wanna be a part of uh, helping uh, uh, our, our businesses that really serve visitors. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you, Maggie. I, you know, this, uh, this issue about um, people who aren't necessarily used to being in nature, all of a sudden finding themselves in nature. And I, I know personally, um, I mean, I, I live in downtown Eureka and I seem to catch a lot of plastic bags in my hedge. And I just, I, I don't know how to deal with it on the county scale. But I do know that one of the things that worked really, really well under Greg's leadership and with Marty from CR was our wear a mask, don't make us ask campaign. Mm -hmm. And I would like to develop maybe, you know, to bring out next year is a garbage campaign. Mm -hmm. There because are folks who are working on that. Mm -hmm. People will do it. I mean, they, I don't think, the majority of them are in no way malicious, mm -hmm. but they aren't going to, you know, hike another half a mile carrying their garbage with them um, unless they are told to. 
So well, yeah, um, we want I think to have this really good feeling like when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And it's kind of look at me, I'm, I'm hip and I'm a part of how Humboldt County is. And we don't litter and we don't use plastic. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So ZWH is zero waste Humboldt, Annika. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Awesome. <laughs> and um, I want to give a, a call out to Cyril because he's doing this great um, thing with his students, um, geo mapping and they're Googling and saying I was here and I loved it. Um, the um, film commission, Cassandra and Nate, are developing this amazing app, which will be a map of the movies. And Marnin Robbins from the uh, California State Parks, he's the head of interpretation. They're going to be doing an app that you can, uh, from what I understand, and I don't understand it, you can flash the image of Humboldt onto a flat surface and then target the areas that you want to visit and information will come up. What a hoop. So I think that in the next year, we're going to see some really interesting apps to help people go around the county. And I'm hoping that the Bureau will be able to take a lead in doing something that um, people can download and move around with. And we probably need to... Um, uh, talk with um, Humboldt State to get everybody on board with that, with these young, brilliant techie minds. If um, that concludes that um, Q and A session, um, since we're or well, we can um, go ahead and I know we've been on Zoom for a little while now, so we can go ahead and take around a 10 minute break and um, everyone can feel free if they need to take a bio break, go and stretch their legs, um, anything that you need to do. And then we can reconvene um, in around 10 minutes. That sounds really good. And I'm gonna um, play a video that, um, that uh, I think is really cool. And um, feel free to uh, take care of yourselves for the next 10 minutes. There we go.
Um, wow, that was great. All right. At Landmark Real Estate. Let's get out of there. We have a couple more minutes, and I just wanted to also show a really awesome video. A 10 out of 10 recommend um, you guys del doing a little bit more delving in. Um, this is um, one of our HSU alum who works on a project um, accessing Humboldt, and he um, creates all these great videos. Um, and one of them was which is the um, Melee Boudouns, and he has a whole series. But in the meantime, when we're just waiting for everybody to come back, uh, we can watch this one. Hi, this is part one of a three-part series about Moel Dunes, which is located about four miles west of the city of Arcata in Humboldt County. This Excuse me. is administered by the Bureau of Land Management. And let me tell you, this place is a lot more than just sand dunes. In fact, I'll show you on a handy map they have posted at the trailhead of Moel Dunes North. You got your Moel Dunes south down there, and we have our Moel Dunes north up here, which is where we are right now. Starting on the eastern boundary, we have Humboldt Bay, and then as we move west towards the ocean, we pass through this little forest right here. And then once we pass through the forest, you'll notice we reach these large sand dunes. Crossing the large sand dunes, we eventually come to the beach, and then we come to the ocean. I would say it's maybe less than a mile from the Humboldt Bay to the ocean. And uh, you can walk it in about an hour, although usually it takes uh, longer because there's so much to see along the way. Okay, uh, enough talking, let's start the walking. <laughs> Okay, in today's show, part one, I'll spend a little bit of time on Humboldt Bay, but most of the time I'll be in the forest. Part two, I'll delve into the geology of those large sand dunes, which developed after an earthquake occurred here in 1700. And part three, I'll climb up on top of the dunes, which are being blown inland away from the ocean at the rate of about three to 10 feet per year. And as they are advancing in, they're actually covering up the forest as they go. What do you say we pick up the pace here a little bit? <laughs> Sitting here on Humboldt Bay, watching the tide roll away. <laughs> yeah, actually, I am sitting on Humboldt Bay, but the tide's not going out. It's actually an incoming tide, but that didn't quite work for the song. So, you know, anyway, Humboldt. Well put. <laughs> okay. If you, I can drop this link in the chat as well. Hold on one sec. Do, 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 do. Let's do a shop stop share. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that first part. Uh, technology is a mystery sometimes, and I didn't realize. Oops, that was for that was for my tech support, and that wasn't for everybody. Um, uh, sometimes technology is a mystery, and um, I didn't realize that if my mic was muted, uh, you guys couldn't hear the the audio to that awesome aerial video. But um, learning in a safe space. Uh, so, 
uh, we are now going to be back. Let me just check the chat. There we go. Ooh. Yep. All right. All right. All set. Okay. Um, like I said before, unfortunately, uh, Nikki Brown was not able to um, come today. Um, I will share some resources and um, some of her information so you guys can get a better holistic view of what she does. It's awesome. Um, in the meantime, I think I'm going to actually turn this over to uh, my amazing boss, uh, uh, Dean Oberlander, who uh, will be uh, giving you a little presentation about uh, what this project is, Discovering Humble. If you, you guys didn't know, this is a uh, part of my uh, senior project. Uh, this is my, yay, yay, senior year. Uh, this is part of my senior project. Uh, and I've also been working with uh, Dean Oberlander on this Discovering Humble project for about a, about a year now. And so take it away. Okay, well, a technology will be super fun, but it starts with um, always with people. And I want to congratulate and thank two alumni that helped make Discovering Humble possible and to work with such amazing HSU students. So first of all, Glenn Atkinson um, is a wonderful alumni who spent some time in the library and said, wow, what amazing work you do with the Library Scholar Intern Program and he helps support uh, paid internships and he really uh, sees the value of that kind of work the real world projects and that's wonderful and i also want to give a, a big shout out to tom boyd an alumnus from 1972 he's worked for years in the lax airport encouraging folks to find the right information and always encouraging folks to come up to humboldt county he recently retired so congratulations tom but he's the one who really pushed, how can we do more for tourism and travel? And he wanted to really invest in it. And his uh, librarian was a, uh, his mother was a librarian at Boston Public Library. So these two alumni had a lot to do with starting of the Discovering Humboldt project. And it really started with, um, we have lots of internships in the library for digital media, for HSU Press, for special collections but why tourism and travel? And uh, it's really because we understood that there's a connection between how to help us recruit and retain students to also helping us support the local economy and the community. And so a good way to think about it is when students arrive on campus for their first time, one of the big questions is, what's there to do around here? And it's how we answer that question that really matters because it's also the very answer that a lot of our tourists are looking for when they're thinking about what's it up there in the Northern California. I mean, way Northern California, because you all know how long it takes to drive up here. So we um, did some initial reach outs for tourism projects, and it really starts with asking students to ask other students about information. So we had uh, Linda Garcia and Deborah Rios um, start in the spring of 2019 and their adventure was help us look at what other libraries are doing. Help us look at tourism and travel websites and tell us what's working, what's not working. And one of the cool things we did, I think in most foundational, is we asked students what is there that you like to do around here? What are your favorites? And that ended up being incredibly invaluable to us because um, what we learned in asking these questions, what's your favorite hike or beach or road trip? And then students would write these stickums and put them on the boards, is they gave us lots of answers. A good example is, a good question is, if a friend or family were visiting you, where would you take them first? And of course, Bittersweet, uh, Kata Scoop, Trinidad Beach, Seacat, local breweries. Now, this is all helpful information to us because sometimes what we, we learn from our students is that they get the places to go visit from word of mouth. So it takes years four years to understand a little bit more about all the cool places around here. So is there any way we can shorten this adventure between what's there to do around here and finding the, the favorites that you all want to have? 
So what we did is we, um, I wanted to share what Linda uh, Garcia said about her spring 2019 Library Scholar Internship. She loved that she was able to talk to students and, and get their point of view and also share her point of view. And as a senior, she was really hoping to impart her knowledge to the new students. And it worked out really well because um, we actually had a freshman as the other intern. So they were both chatting about sort of their experiences from a freshman perspective and a senior's perspective. So she really felt it was important to create something really beautiful and share these spaces. Deborah Rios, um, she was really surprised at how impactful those whiteboards were. And she got excited by asking these questions and would learn from them all the time. So she actually grew in her ability to ask and engage people. So internships are amazing what they do. Students are incredible. And they're in many ways, some of our best ways to really promote our area and even understand our area. Because oftentimes they tell us so much. Now, I was very fortunate in the spring of 2020 to have two, um, two more stellar interns, Bryce Ellard and Annika. Thank you, Annika, for your great work. Now, what the spring of 2020's internship was about was twofold. We, we had Bryce Ellard, who's a computer science student. He wanted to develop an app to find hiking and make information about events all in one location. And you get to hear a little bit about uh, his experience, but it was really transformative for him because he was able to do real world problem solving in this internship and get really far. And Annika, she got to interview various people in the hospitality and recreation area and it really has um, been an incredible asset, so much so that we had to hire her as a student assistant the next year, uh, next fall. This is what happened with Bryce's work. Bryce went on to start a HumSpot team in the computer science capstone. And you see him here, even though it was, it was a pandemic, he went ahead and continued to work on this project. And he also got uh, Louise, Amanda, and Jack interested in working with him to develop this app that tells about the trails in our area and the events in our area. The HumSpot team developed essentially a prototype to say, we can do it. We can get the event information all in one location. We can get some of the great places together. And it was an incredible capstone or portfolio work for them. And they had the opportunity to continue on. But as, as usual, they all graduated and then their world is so different. They're looking for jobs and they're getting those jobs. and. That's the, their work right now. Now, I'm gonna share a little bit about uh, what I was doing this summer because after that first experience of finding out what cool sites there are in the world in, of Humboldt, um, I discovered that there's an easy way to get the information connected. And here it is. Basically this summer I started in July of 2020 and photographed all the favorite places that the students had identified, plus my own favorites. And of course it starts with the library. HSU library is my favorite place. But I've added 2,344 photos, 11 videos, 115 reviews, and six new places and some fact checking. Now these all collectively with not even a year has passed, have been viewed as photos 1,411,000 times, and the reviews have been viewed 104,000. And the places that I've added have been viewed 77,000. I know that's not us doing it. I mean, even if I clicked on my own photos, I just won't do that. The thing is, is it really does make these wonderful parts of our, our favorite places discoverable. And I'm going to do a quick example of why that matters so much. If you do a dog parks near me search, what it does is it pulls up the information about the reviews that are in the reviews and it tells you where those parks are. You could do all sorts of searches like uh, mashed potatoes, uh, potato, uh, waffle cone, 
cones near me. And usually even that pulls up some of the places that sell mashed potatoes. What Google Maps does is it makes it so that when Google is searched, people find what they're looking for. You can even look up cool places. Cool places near me looks and finds reviews that say cool in them. So one of the things I did is I made sure that when I did any reviews or photo tagging in here, I would always say what people could expect. Yesterday I saw somebody on a uh, windsurfing uh, ex expedition on Big Lagoon. What surprised me is that was actually a big uh, a surfer that was able to lift their surfboard off the water because there was a hydrofoil there. I did not know that you could do that here. But it's good to put that in the photos that I'm going to add from this weekend so that people can find places to do these things. It's so fun. When I look at the 1.4 million views of my photos, it tells me that the one that got the most views is HSU Library. So there must be something special about that library. <laughs> now, Annika did a great job in the internship in the fall, and she we hired her right or in the spring, and we hired her in the fall because we really wanted to see the growth of a project that helps people write reviews. How can you help us discover and share your favorite places? Well, she did an amazing workshop on Google Maps, Yelp, and TripAdvisor, and there are other ways to support students in tourism. So you'll soon hear what Annika has to say about Google Maps, and I really appreciate the amazing work that she's done because the more we can add to the reviews of our favorite spaces, the more people can find this, their new favorites. And this is important to not just recruiting our students, but when students come to us and they ask, what's there to do around here? We wanna give them a lot of options because we want them to stay here and graduate here and all the things that make them successful here. Now, if you're interested in wanting to know how to support Discovering Humboldt, well, there's certainly the easiest way is just add your reviews and photos and, to, and videos to the various discovery platforms because that has an incredible impact well beyond Humboldt County. And if you're answering the review or if you're writing the review to say simply, why Arcata? What is cool? What, did, what do you find that you're doing here and others are doing here? Whether it's kid friendly or it's sports related, please add your reviews. If you have any feedback or suggestions about this program, please uh, send it to me. There's my email address. I'll put the location of the website and my email address in the chat. And you could always sponsor or support Library Scholar interns. Um, it's so much fun. And if you want to learn more about internships, here's our Library Scholar internship page, and it lists all the projects that they've done. Because truly, it's great to learn in the classroom, but when we create a project that encourages them to get engaged in the community, create a real world solution, it's so much impactful in their life and makes our life richer. So please let us know what your thoughts are and please share your favorite spaces. I know from the folks I've asked about favorite fishing spaces that nobody wants to give up their favorite fishing spaces. I know that folks don't want to give up their favorite surfing spaces. They say, I've heard this direct quote, oh, we send them to um, Moonstone Beach. <laughs> Please share your spaces because here's the thing, we build community that way, we build connections. And I really appreciate this opportunity. Annika is gonna add her workshop videos so you can see all the amazing uh, ways that you can contribute to this project. Okay, I think that is it. Are there any questions or I better get those links in there? Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. I just want to say that the, um, working for the library has been definitely one of the most rewarding things I've done throughout my college experience. I got to hone in my interpersonal and um, 
professional skills. I got to uh, reach out and talk to so many different tourism stakeholders around the area. And, you know, it made, it also gave me the opportunity to fall back in love with uh, the area. Um, it's been great. I'm just going to respond to Annalisa's uh, comments. Thank you, Annalisa. I, I think one of the things we'd love to see in our reviews is um, uh, more indigenous voices. Um, we want to add that voice to the sites, the metadata that's out there, because then we learn. We learn about the names of spaces, but we also learn about the places themselves. There are so many ways that we can enrich the data. If you compare how many reviews are in our area, they amount to about 100 to maybe 400 at the most. And those are pretty good searches in Google. Larger places, uh, more destination spaces, have thousands of reviews, making them so much easier for people to find their favorites. So please uh, contribute. It makes a big difference. And um, please, at any time, share your feedback and suggestions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, on that note, I think that uh, I'm going to introduce myself and uh, <laughs> I will be giving a little presentation about um, one of the presentations that I've done for the Discovering Humboldt Project and let's get rolling. All right. There we go. This might look familiar. Um, hi, everybody. Um, this is my uh, Discovering Humble with Google Maps presentation. Um, yeah. Uh, if you guys have any questions, raise your hand and or send it in the chat and then we'll get right to you. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Annika Slattery. I am a senior here at HSU. And for the past four years, I've been pursuing my BA in Recreation Administration with a focus in sustainable tourism and a minor in business marketing. Um, I, I just love being outside in almost any capacity. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, I really love to do what I do here so much. Um, I'm also a student assistant at the library and I'm working with the awesome uh, Dean Opperlander. So I'm going to get into this presentation will consist of I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, why writing reviews are so important, which Zerul had touched on and and then also um, how to contribute to um, Google Maps and how to add a missing place too. But first, I would like to talk a little bit about why review writing is so important. Uh, Cyril had touched on how uh, these bigger locations get a lot more traffic, and that makes sense. Humboldt's geographically um, isolated. We have a smaller population, so we're not going to have that same amount of digital presence that um, larger counties like L.A. County um, has. When I was looking at the last um, review for a place like Venice Beach, they had around 3,000 reviews, and compared to Moonstone, which only has around 300. Now, this is really important because um, we want to increase our digital presence so that we can support tourism and help people find cool places. Julie had said um, before that our our um, tourism radius is around, um, it's like a triangle and it's around the Chico Redding, Oregon, and then the Bay Area, um, 300, 500 mile driving radius. Um, a great way that we can lock in and um, increase our digital presence so that we become more searchable to these people in that area and beyond um, is in is writing our reviews for our favorite places. 9% um, of Google's algorithm is um, driven by these uh, near me searches and um, Google reviews. And you can, Cyril touched on this a little bit, but if you go, oh, oh my gosh, there we go. Um, if you were to go to Google Maps here, I'll actually, do that right now. How about that? Actually, let's go to Google. Let's do yes, dog parks, <laughs> parks near, near, near me. There we go. Um, you can see that uh, our Google reviews are the first things that pop up. These are the things that people are paying the most attention to. Um, so they really take. They really do um, provide a huge impact. There we go. And um, so thinking about that, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the customer journey, which is um, the cycle in which a customer goes through when they're making the process of deciding where they wanna go and what they wanna do. So in terms of Humboldt County, 
Um, I'm going to put this in terms of Humboldt County. So maybe we're starting with awareness. Um, you heard about Humboldt. Maybe you saw Murder Mountain. Your 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 interest is it peaked. You're intrigued. Um, so you're looking online and you're trying to figure out what to do. Um, consideration that is where um, reviews fall. Uh, also looking into social media and blog posts. The purchase, which is a um, which can be that plane bus or that tank of gas to get up here retention, the experiences that you're having here, hopefully they're all positive. Um, and then later advocacy, which is talking about your experience, talking about that on social media networks, newsletters. But then also I think a huge part of advocacy is in the review process. As you can see that it becomes a lot more um, cyclical if you're connecting your reviews and your advocacy of the area um, and less linear. So, so we want to we want to uh, we want to increase and bolster our um, digital presence so that we can be more searchable. That so we can not only reach prospective tourists but then also prospective students too. Um, fun fact about me: I was a um, I am a Hawaii transplant. From I I did high school in Hawaii and then I came to California after never setting foot in California before, and I absolutely hated it here in Humble at first. Um, I was like there's no sun, I'm going to lose my tan, and there's no Jamba juices anywhere. Like, what am I going to do? And it wasn't until I started getting off campus, really seeing all the amazing, beautiful things that Humboldt has to offer that I started to fall in love with the area. And now I'm in my senior year, and um, I'm so thankful for the, for the time that I spent here. Um, fun fact about me. So we have to we have to get out and and explore to you know create these meaningful experiences. A big part of that, but I would also like to talk about um, a little bit about how to contribute to uh, Google Maps for if anyone doesn't know already. Um, Google is this, you know it's this huge huge um, review uh, review network and uh, it's something that we can really uh, take advantage of. Sorrel said that he has almost a million a million something views on his reviews. That's insane. Okay, so we can either follow along with me or um, do it on your own screen. So we're going to um, we're going to post a review for one of our favorite beaches. So um, going into Google Maps, searching up our favorite beach, and then um, scrolling down to that click your or to uh, write your review. So I'm gonna say Trinidad uh, State Beach. There we go. Perfect. Also, a really cool feature before I begin, I just don't want to forget this, is um, Cyril actually showed me this at the beginning of the year. It's really cool. You get, so if you go to satellite of the image of the map, and then you're holding down on the control and the shift buttons at the same time, and using your cursor and kind of shifting up, you can get more of a topographical, ooh, you know, make this full screen. There we go. Uh, you can get more of a topographical um, view of the area. It's pretty cool. If it will load in a second, give it just give her a second. But uh, while that's while that's loading up, so we're going to go to making finding our reviews. So we're just going to scroll down here. And we're going to click that right our review button, and then that's where we can put our rating, our details, and uh, also our detail, our relevant and inf informative details, and also our pictures. Where did my presentation go? No, yes, there we go. <laughs> Okay, any any questions, concerns, screams of anguish? <laughs> awesome. Okay. Also, um, a really cool feature that Google Maps has is you can add a missing place. Um, so, and then you can add a missing place, and that way people can add to that review, um, creating a more uh, in-depth presen uh, presence. Um, so we can go to Google Maps. Um, you're just going to click on any location that doesn't have, already have a pin, or um, and then um, you can click on it, and then then it will create a little pin. And you click on the pin, and um, and that's when we can add in all of our um, information. So I can show that right now too, just so you guys get a live demo. Let's go to Trinidad Beach. Let's see. Let's do it. just a, anywhere. It's fine. If I can do that. You're going to click on, I believe it is the, yes, there we go. Yep. There we go. We're going to click on the top part um, on where that pin was. And then, and that is where you can add that missing place on the left-hand side. 
and you can add in your name, a category of what it is, and then um, I think you can also do a little um, description too. So yeah, discard, there you go. Fun. This is really useful for, you know, for when we want to um, really uh, highlight a place that may be a little bit hidden. Okay, there we go. Um, finding finding uh, relevant places. So um, when we're thinking about reviews and thinking about what is the most useful to us, um, we touched in a little bit beforehand in the importance of um, keywords. You know, Sorrel had said uh, cool places near me and it pops up with all these different, um, these different reviews that have the word cool highlighted. Um, this is also really useful when we're talking about um, other features of the location, um, like ADA accessibility, dog friendly, family friendly, um, emergency phones, restrooms, all that kind of stuff. All that is really great, um, useful information to add into a review. I just want to check the chat box real fast. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, yeah. Also, um, some information that is really pertinent to reviews is um, talking about either particularly positive or negative experiences, um, interactions with customers or staffs, tips and tricks that you've learned in the past. Um, make sure that you're being as detailed as possible. And pictures are key. I'd like to take the time and I'm actually gonna go right back to, see if I can find Trinidad. Do, 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 do. Go back. I'm going to search up. Oh, I'm just going to do Trinidad. Uh, there we go, California. Okay. So if I'm scrolling down, I can see there's 64 reviews. And I think that, and some something I just wanted to highlight this one in particular, very pretty here. The, um, the views are great, lots of parking. Um, there are two sides. One side has a pier, um, the other is a restaurant and the shelter cove. The other has the large beach, very windy, um, even in warm temps, bring a coat. So that's really great information um, that gives um, the prospective reader um, Okay, so I know I'm getting. I know I should bring a coat. I know that I know that there are um, different kinds of parking. Or there, there's parking there. Um, there's multiple things to do. There's restaurants. Um, you know, that's all great relevant information. And as much as you know, um, any reviews are great reviews. Um, but you know, compared to maybe somewhere where it's just like a beautiful beach, you know, that might be like, oh, great. So I know this location is beautiful, but we also want to make sure that we're sharing information that is pertinent and relevant. Um, so yes. Also, um, some things that to consider when you're posting reviews are also, um, depending on your comfort level and um, privacy, adding some small demographic information, you know, um, saying things like, um, I'm a college student, I'm a parent, I'm handy capable. Um, those kinds of things are um, really pertinent for other people to know that, okay, well, I went to the, they went to this place and they had this great experience or they didn't have this great experience um, because of those um, because of those uh, maybe factors, um, like what features, what features are um, helping or hurting um, a location. Um, and make sure also um, sharing pictures. I actually was um, looking into this and um, when I was doing some research for Yelp and uh, uh, 10, I, I read something about how um, if you have 10 or more pictures on your review, uh, that it will have around 12% more click view value. Um, when we're thinking about this, you know, everybody loves pictures. Everybody loves um, window shopping. So pictures are key too. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one of my last reviews um, that probably doesn't have nearly as much views as Cyril's. Um, but this was on, um, this is on the Arcadia Community Forest. And I'll just read it to you. Okay. So I took trail 14 to four to, uh, I took 14 to four to 16, starting from the Jolly J. In total, the hike was only about 1.5 miles round trip at a moderate, moderate difficulty. It was so beautiful. Um, you get the, um, you get the best of old world. All the wood, redwood groves, three and serene fern meadows. Um, there was a small bench on trail four that looked over a sea of ferns, absolutely breathtaking. I found this was a great place to de-stress from class and life. 
So if you notice, there's a couple things that I wanted to um, highlight because I wanted to add in as much pertinent information. So I wanted to add in um, details about um, the mileage, about the difficulty, about where I started and where I ended. Oops. Um, and then also, I don't know if anybody picked up on this, a sneaky way to say, maybe I, maybe you don't want to say I'm a, I'm a parent, I'm a college student, um, a, de a great way to de-stress from class and life. Um, and also saying that I started from the Jolly J. This lets students know that this is a place that's accessible to them. So thinking about all that great stuff. There we go. So there, I wouldn't be doing my, my job as a sustainable tourism major if I didn't uh, give you some things to consider when you're out and about um, looking at all these great things that Humboldt has to offer. Since the goal of this project, um, it was not to post these reviews and all these huge um, masses of people come into Humboldt, but rather to, you know, start the traction and um, create interest. Um, hopefully in a year from now or six months from now, whenever um, this is all over, that these reviews will be seen by um, a whole bunch of people and that will um, will bring people in later when it's starting to become more safe. Um, also, respecting all posted um, boundaries and signage, you know, we don't want to, when we're out in the forest, it's always really, um, really nice, or not really nice, it's really um, tempting to go off trail and um, do our own kind of self-exploration, but that does degrade the, um, the environment to some degree, so always staying on posted trails. I also really like to practice the rule of um, taking three. So when I'm hiking um, or enjoying um, the, my surroundings, taking, if you're seeing some trash, take three pieces. It doesn't have to be all of it, just take three. Um, so yes. So this is uh, so this is what I've been really doing for discovering Humble, and then also putting together this um, this uh, summit. I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, these all these awesome presentations. I'd like to thank my speakers again: Tammy Reese, Julie Ben Bao, and Nikki Brown. Even though she could not make it today, and Tammy had to leave, um, it means so much to me that you guys have uh, donated your time and energy um, to be part of this project, along with all of everyone who came out and um, to this presentation today um yeah it's it's been it's been fantastic and I just I want to thank you all so much I'm gonna stop my sh screen share right now <laughs> um but yes that is uh that will conclude um or unless anybody has any questions for me um that will conclude uh this uh the summit but um thank you so much yes Sweet. I have a question yes what surprised you about the tourism and this project, the summit? <laughs> so, oh, the summit. Um, I guess so how many people were were willing to be a part of this? Um, I I had so much fun coordinating with all my speakers and really just learning about how how rural tourism um, is seen through different lenses from all these different perspectives. You know, there's. You know, I was really looking forward to Nikki talking about economic development, but um, I really like there's all these different lenses that talk about you know, how we can utilize marketing and we can utilize um, the things that might not be. Um, we can you, you can utilize our Google reviews and things that are accessible for for just the, the, the common folk like I um, it's been a fantastic it's been a fantastic project. Yes, yes, great. Well, uh, and I commend you on wanting to talk about economic development because there is no higher calling um, saying that as an executive director of the Redwood Region Economic Development Commission. Um, <clears throat> that that um, so and I'm really with Fly Humboldt and some of the other stuff I do. I'm, I'm really good at stealing other people's work uh, mm -hmm. or building upon what they do. And I'm wondering, is there a way we can take um, I'm sure there is uh, the what you were just talking about in terms of all the you know photos and the reviews and everything and create something that we can then market as a as a pretty easy to use app or website embed or something like that. So um, I could like stick it in flyhumble.org and say, hey, you know, search here, look at the latest reviews, even have a scroll. I don't know what, but mm -hmm. something that captures people's attention and they can do that super simple search that would be embedded and themed with our our websites. I think that would be super useful. Um, I mm -hmm. mean, 
Go do it. <laughs> uh, I mean, we were, we developed it, de- been a uh, part of developing that app. Um, at this time, at this point, there's probably not a, you know, a one, a one-stop shop. It would be um, encouraging everyone who comes to utilize, not only utilizing um, Google Maps and Google Maps, but right. also right. utilizing, utilizing Yelp too. They're right. such a huge, um, they're such a huge platform for reviews and finding uh, new services and new places. Um, and a lot of humble uh, businesses, usually if you look for that little help, uh, that Yelp sticker in the windows, right. they can usually find that. Um, at this time, I think that would be a fantastic idea. It looked like Sorrell's on it. Too. I would love to be a part of that, but cool. <laughs> I would say um, heavily, heavily um, um, asking participants to utilize the, the, right. the Yelps and Google services that they have. Well, I like the I like the idea of having this crowdsource review and then having a, a really easy interface for those of us who are in the job of marketing uh, to to put out there and, and make it a useful tool. Sorrell uh, just told me he would uh, not only give you an excellent uh, letter of recommendation, but you would have an A in the class if you helped him with that project. Oh, I'm not the professor. Thank uh, goodness. Well, you, you're the dean. You you have some pull. You make it happen, man. But, but I do have a question, Annika. Mm-hmm. So you're graduating this semester, right? Yes. What's yes. next for you? And um, this is a good time to do a pitch. Well, I'm glad, I'm so glad I'm so glad that you asked that. For the summer, I'm actually I'm going to be out of humble. I'm going to be working um, at a equestrian day camp and doing a whole bunch of recreation stuff over there, which I'm very, very excited about. But I will be up in humble for the foreseeable future. Um, I'll be back in August. Um, I'd love to I really found that in uh, my time studying uh, recreation administration. I definitely have a, a passion for event planning. Um, this was this was hectic and chaotic and um, beautiful at the same time. And I love that that part about um, event planning. Um, but yes, I will be up here, and um, and I can also put my email. In that in the chat too. Hey, I, I, there we go. Yes, that's me. <laughs> And when, you, when you get back, reach out to us and we'll see if we can find something for you to do. Okay, that would be great. That would be that would be fantastic. I would love to. It means so much that um, everybody came too. Thank you. All right. I'm just going to check and make sure I don't, I'm missing anything. Uh, oh, I actually saw a comment. A comment. Um, uh, what about the issue of people leaving reviews when they haven't been there um and probably uh when they haven't been there probably just to get points um on, as google guides huh i didn't even realize that was an issue interesting um Ask I, would keep on, I would keep on um encouraging people to keep on adding that those relevant details you know Ooh. i would keep i would encourage people to inc- like keep on um the in the information that is pertinent i've seen um you know people add information that they would only know if they they had actually went and know that the parking meters only run from this time to this time um making sure well, i was going to add too um because i'm a reviewer um just because it's part of my business but people need to understand that a a a good review that is deemed phony does mm-hmm. more harm than good. So it doesn't matter, you know, don't try and get the brownie points that way, or don't mm-hmm. think you're doing the business a favor. Yep. Um, phony reviews in the long run will hurt the business. Definitely, definitely. Is there anybody, is there anybody else that um, has any questions or comments, screams of anguish for me? That's awesome. Um, okay, well then, since it is, let me check my time. I think it it's is. time to give you a round of applause, Annika. Oh. Yay! <laughs> you guys want to hear a map joke before I leave? <laughs> yes, <laughs> but then I also want to say thanks, Victoria and Cheryl and everybody who helped uh, put this on. I really appreciate it very much. Good job. And thanks Good everyone job. for participating. Yes, I could not have done this without the amazing support of the library and um, Sorrel and Victoria and Cheryl and everybody. It's been 
a, so, such an amazing team effort and um, I'm very, very thankful. Annika, do you have a list of everybody who attended today? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to put my uh, email in the chat. If anybody would like to um, stalk me <laughs> or even not stalk me and just connect with me, that would be great. Yep. And then I think we're, we're also working on, um, I'm making sure to save all of the links that were mentioned today in the ch chat so that we can go back and look at everything that we talked about. And also this video will be posted um, along with my other videos um, on Google and Yelp will also be posted to the library's website too. So you can go back and rehash all of that. Great. So Annika, before you do your fabulous and hysterical map joke, um, mm -hmm. will Greg and the Bureau be able to have access to that video so that we could actually play it at the airport? Oh, the, um, my, my, the, my last video? The, the, um, one the video of the, uh, the first one you played, which was five minutes long, which oh. is the scenic. Oh, yes, here I can. I did. I did not film that myself. Um, that's just on YouTube. But yes, I can. I can send, send you that link right now. OK, thank you. I'll find it. But here, while I'm doing that, I'll um, it's time for it's time for a map joke, everybody. Yes. <laughs> um, OK, so for my so for my boyfriend and I's five year anniversary, he said, OK, I'm going to take a, I'm going to I'm going to take you on a trip, all expensive paid. Uh, wherever you want to go, I'm going to get you, a, I'm going to get a map and I'm going to get you a dart and you just close your eyes and throw the dart and wherever it lands, um, that's where I will take you. And so I closed my eyes and I threw the dart and um, I'm happy to say that I am now going to be vacationing behind the fridge in two weeks. Da -dum -dum well, I would definitely check out and see what else is behind the fridge before you go there. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Victoria, for sharing that. That's the, the last aerial video that's in the chat now. All right. I think that I think that well on that note, um, I will I will conclude this uh, this summit. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone who came and participated. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>